That was probably the most intense and brutal thing I've ever played in a video game. What's going on guys, it's Ghost Robo and I'm here at PlayStation Experience 2017 and I just got done playing the new Detroit Become Human demo. Last night at the opening presentation, they crowd played the hostage situation, which I played back at E3 six months ago. Today, I got to play the Stormy Night section, which is the abusive father and female android Kara section. They showed it off at Paris Games Week, but this is the first time I believe it was playable, and boy, oh boy, was it a trip. Before I get started, big thanks to Sony and PlayStation for flying me out to PSX and getting me a badge for the event. Much appreciated, but man... I don't even know how to feel about this. I actually saw an article discussing, like, did did Quantic Dream go too far? And I'm curious to know your take. So after you hear about this and you, you watch the, the footage, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Every time I play Detroit, I try to make things go real wrong. Because it, it's one thing to say, like, hey, we've got all these outcomes. We You know, you can die. We've got all this stuff. But to actually have it pan out, I want to see that in practice. Um, I really liked Heavy Rain. There were different permutations, maybe not as much freedom as I would have liked, but Detroit seems to open that up and expand upon that concept significantly. Uh, this scene, though, expands upon the emotional impact of these games. And look, you know, whether it's Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, like they are very, very good at tapping into, um, I feel, emotion. Now, maybe the delivery of the actors or whatnot hasn't been the most perfect in the past. I feel like it's very strong this time around, and right off the bat, you know, whether it was the hostage situation with Connor or here, Stormy Night with Kara, the graphics are beautiful. The game is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I think it's one of the prettiest looking games. They have amazing facial capture. Um, they've got amazing movement and animation. The world that they build, the house, uh, the rooftop, they're just, they're so lifelike, so cool. It definitely is not the Detroit I know. I'm there all the time for my lions, but uh, man, they're tackling some intense stuff. So this scene is all about a real angry single father, and he's pissed off that his uh, life is kind of in shambles. His wife left him. He's stuck with his daughter. Uh, she may be a sweet girl, but he's not prepared to raise her at all. He's a drug addict. He lost his job because of androids. He has an android that helps out around the house, but he's not happy about it. And I got all of this good details, uh, all these good details from Guillaume, the guy who uh, presented and talked about the game at the uh, the conference. And so it was cool to hear it firsthand. Now, my goal again was to make things go as bad as possible. So the ideal route in this scene is that you, you know, her dad, Todd, the dad gets mad and the daughter runs and you protect her. There's this moment where you have to sort of like break free from your invisible chains because Todd tells you to stay put and you decide not to. And you can either uh, go console him or you can go protect the little girl. Um, but first you have to break free, which is kind of, the, the way they visualized that was cool. So I went and consoled Todd, didn't work. He went after Kara, uh, or sorry, he went after his daughter. And he's already hit her once. Now he's got a belt. And like, this is, this is already kind of uncomfortable territory. Child abuse, I really had a tough time watching it in Wolfenstein 2. And uh, it's tough to witness here. They do cut away. You're not seeing someone get like brutalized, but the it's very evident what's going on. So I go up to the room, tell him to stop. He says no, and this action scene plays out. And I'm intentionally, you know, hitting some of the presses, missing some of the presses because a lot of this does play out as a quick time event. You are able to control the androids and move around the room during the investigative periods, and uh, you know, learn about what's going on in the environment, touch things play around with things. It, it, the Connor scene on the rooftop uh, with sort of the rogue android is more of the like investigation crime scene portion. This was more of an action scene. And uh, it was a couple hours into Kara's part of the story. And you basically start fighting Todd. And again, because I was missing, it, it wasn't going well. Uh, you then have a time sequence where you can grab Todd you can uh, try and pull him away. There's a couple options, um, and they don't work, and you need to do more. And I ran out of time, intentionally, uh, but it's pretty intense because Kara is getting beaten up. Her face is falling apart. Todd says he will break her worse than before, so you know this is not the first time this has happened. And she is basically down for the count. She's trying to struggle and, and save the girl, and she can't. This is where it just gets, I don't know, Todd kills his daughter. She's dead. 
he lays her down on the bed and says, Daddy's not angry anymore. Daddy loves you. And her eyes are glazed over and she is motionless. He beat his daughter to death in a drug-fueled explosive rampage. And you didn't stop it. Now, Kara is dead, so her story effectively ends, and the girl is dead. Now, games in general don't tackle a lot of violence with kids. You think about Fallout, you can't hurt the kids, things like that. It's kind of like a, a taboo topic, or it has been. I really admire and respect Quantic Dream for pushing the emotional potential of video games so hard. I don't know how I feel about this as the outcome, but I do love that they're able to create such intense scenes with such vivid emotions from a bunch of pixels and a bunch of code. I definitely felt nervous. I definitely felt uncomfortable. The dad's rage was real, and the daughter's death was haunting. She's dead, and I'm assuming in the full game you have much more of a connection to this family because you play more of Kara, and it's not just like, oh, you sit down and show up. And therefore, it'll probably be have an even bigger impact. Touching back to this article I read, where they said, you know, did they go too far, and is this something that should be in games? How do you feel about that? You know, I feel like it was handled respectfully. <laughs> if there's any way to handle this, it's even a, a weird word to use in the same sentence. But I feel like they handled it well. It's not a gory scene. It's not a brutal... Um, vicious depiction it is much more of an emotionally unbelievable depiction if that makes sense there's a a a decency in which they cover this and for that i say okay when i first heard about this i was like you gotta be kidding me i don't know if i even want to experience that but because they don't go over the top, because I don't feel it's glorified in any way, because it's not about being bloody, it's not about being shocking in that sense, it's more about shocking your emotions rather than your eyes, I'm going to say, in my opinion, it's okay. I was shocked that that's one of the outcomes, and I think that just speaks to the exciting potential for Detroit Become Human. Not because, oh God, I want to see people, you know, terrible things happen, but because they're willing to push boundaries and there are many points where the different androids can die and then you carry on the story with the others. And there are obviously uh, significant moral choices and significant life or death situations for the humans in the game as well. And I think that all, that puts you constantly alert and on edge, knowing that things can go wrong at any time, knowing that your reactions and the way you handle situations whether right or wrong, whether skilled or unskilled, are going to have an impact. And you can kind of intentionally be unskilled or intentionally be skilled if you want things to go a certain way or not go a certain way. You can play 100% like, hey, I'm going to win this game and hit all the button presses and make everything perfect, and that's going to give you one outcome. You can try your best and just see what happens, or you can intentionally manipulate, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to get a desired outcome. I'm sure there will be situations where even if it seems like things are going right or wrong, they don't. And I hope that that is the gray area they really explore. I hope it's not that hitting X circle square L2 R2 at the right time guarantees you a happy ending and flubbing the quick time events guarantees you a sad ending. I hope that there are moral decisions and options that are much more gray and that are much more decision-based rather than skill-based. Because yes, this is a video game, but it's much more a story and an experience. And I'm not playing... Detroit or Heavy Rain or Beyond Two Souls because I think it has like really cool hands on the controller feel. I will say that this control is better than Heavy Rain for sure um, and Beyond Two Souls, I think. But it's not like, oh my god, this is Super Mario and so fun to, to you know run and jump. It's about the story and it's about the impact. And I think they've absolutely nailed already in the few scenes I've played, they've nailed how they are able to effectively convey emotion how they are effectively able to make you uncomfortable, and how they are effectively able to make you feel whatever you feel for these characters. Human or android, they all have problems, they all have issues, and I feel like Detroit is all about putting you 
in these situations and trying to understand, empathize, hate, love, fear, push for, pull for these different characters. And that's a really cool goal to strive for in gaming. I really, really love that. I cannot wait to play more. I want to know your take. How do you feel about a <laughs> a dad beating his daughter to death in a video game and you having the option or the opportunity to stop it or not? And not stopping, it doesn't just mean the death of, of this character. It also means the end of that path, that, that playable path. And I love that at the end of these scenes, they show this sort of web of decisions and web of outcomes and how things went. And there really are a lot of different branching paths. And I hope that they're able to keep that consistent and obscured. I don't want to know what's going to happen if I'm good at button presses. And that's sort of my my point of, of, of not concern, but like hope for, for Detroit is that they're able to avoid being a good button presses equals good outcome, bad button presses equals bad outcome always. It's fine if that's the case sometimes, but I want to be... I want the lines to be blurred, and I don't, I don't want it to be senseless, but I want more decisions rather than just skill-based QTEs. Let me know your take in the comment below. I love this game. I cannot wait to play it. I wish they gave a date. Spring was what they said on stage. To me, that says God of War probably hits in March, and then this in April, my guess. I feel like Red Dead 2 is coming in May, and I think God of War does not want to be near that, so my guess is God of War early, and then Detroit, and I'm ready to go to this city. It's going to be a crazy ride. These t Today's scene definitely tells me this game is going to make you think, it's going to make you feel, and hopefully the, the overall culmination of the plot really has a lot to talk about. And hopefully everyone's experience is a little bit different and that there are big deviations, especially as you progress towards that ending, whatever it may be. Anyways, guys and girls, thanks so much for watching. Hope you had a fantastic day. Thanks again to Sony for getting me the badge and getting me out here so I can play it. Until next time, everybody, I love you so much. Drink some hot chocolate, and we will see you all later.